RISC V is a free, open source instruction set architecture, which was first introduced about 10 years ago. Right now, RISC V is taking off like a rocket, and this rocket is fueled by demand for AI and machine learning. How this will transform the whole chip design industry? Let's find out. Risk V originally emerged in Berkeley about 10 years ago. Initially, it was a purely academic project. It was invented to teach students how to design microchips. And what is amazing about it, it is open source. In software field, this open source approach exists for years, but this is much less common in hardware. Until recent, all the instruction sets were proprietary. Most of the chips in the cloud and in the PC market are based on x86 instruction set architecture. Only Intel and AMD have rights to build x86-based processors. An alternative is ARM. It powers 95% of all the mobile devices like phones and tablets. However, this one is also proprietary. ARM licenses chips and also the instruction set, but that's quite expensive. Now, imagine that you need to integrate a processor. You cannot just go and design an x86 processor and licensing from ARM is costly. Most of the time, instead of designing a processor, companies end up buying all of the shelf chips. Those off-the-shelf chips are general purpose and they usually come with a huge overhead of features. So you have to pay for these extra features and extra area and for sure you get power consumption overhead. Now with Risk v Everyone can design their own processor because it's available online and for free. You can already find some RISC V code for some of the microcontrollers at GitHub. How RISC V will change the world of chip design? First of all, it will speed up the design process so we get faster time to market. Eventually, RISC V will transform the industry from using many off-the-shelf chips towards more specific custom designs. Unlike ISAs, which are owned by ARM or Intel, there are many companies which are working on RISC V and pushing it forward. Remember what happened to MIPS? With RISC V, it's not gonna happen. According to Semica, which is an analytic company, in five years, Risk V can comprise about 15% total revenue for CPU core design. And that's amazing growth, considering how long they've been around. In fact, the predictions are that Risk V will capture 62.4 billion Risk V CPU cores in just the next few years. And RISC V chips will be everywhere. Especially, I see it fitting into the embedded chips and low power applications like HEI. Most of RISC V is open source, and there is a whole ecosystem behind. New extensions are constantly released, and this helps designers to create RISC V based chips for AI and machine learning, IoT, and more. This means someone who starts designing an AI chip doesn't have to start from scratch. They can use instructions which are already available and innovate on top of them. The philosophy of RISC reduced instruction set computer is simple and short instruction set. The core of RISC V is just a set of 47 instructions, and that's enough to build a chip. In contrast, x86 instruction set has about 1000 instructions, and some of them are coming from ages. In terms of hardware, complex instruction set means there are more logic to be implemented on silicon, so more transistors. More transistors means more leakage and higher power consumption. In contrast, simple instruction set means less logic to be implemented. This means you can build a low power processor by stripping down the core instruction set to the bare minimum. A great example here is a chip designed by Esperanto Technologies. Esperanto designed an SOC, and here it stands for Supercomputer on a Chip. 
This chip is AI acceleration silicon, which is based on RISC-V. In order to make it efficient for AI, they have introduced vector instructions for machine learning, such as matrix multiplication. New SOC features more than 1,000 RISC-V-based cores, and it consumes just 20 watts of power while running at 1 GHz clock. It seems to hit the right spot between compute and power efficiency. Now, Esperanto chip will accelerate AI in data centers, but it also fits to low-power applications like battery-powered devices and HAI. Why I love this chip? Because it's a perfect example how you can take a general-purpose RISC-V architecture, customize it to your needs, and build a solid, low-power AI chip. Despite Esperanto technologies, there are other startups who are using it for AI, like Neuron and Ceremorphic. They are also building RISC-V based chips for AI. The momentum behind RISC-V is huge. And of course, many large chip makers starting to use it in their chips. Recently, Intel joined the RISC-V board and will be investing in this technology. Last year, they even tried to acquire Sci-5, but later about this. Now, Intel Mobile IQ Ultra will have 12 RISC V cores and an ARM-based GPU. Also, Google developed their Titan M2 security chip based on RISC V. RISC V, in contrast to ARM, looks very, very appealing for emerging markets like India and China. Many Chinese companies started to build RISC-V based microcontrollers like the one from Giga Device. Alibaba is also working on a 16-core RISC-V based chip for data centers. And of course, RISC-V talk can't go without mentioning Sci-5. I think at the moment it's the best known company for developing various RISC-V based cores. Sci-5 was founded back in 2015 by the same guys who created the RISC-V architecture. Now they build RISC-V cores and sell them. What actually happens? You come to them or to their website with a particular specification in mind. Let's say I want a chip which runs at 1 gigahertz, I have certain area, I want to get certain features, I want it to support uh, half precision operations, and then I can combine the core with other mixed signal blocks, memory peripherals. What you get from Sci-5 is a description of this CPU in a chisel language. Chisel is a high-level programming language which is used to write reusable and parameterizable hardware code. Based on this code, generator will produce lower-level, uh, very low code of your chip, which is then synthesizable. This means if you need one more core, you just update the number and the lower-level code is then regenerated, and that's pretty fast. Then you implement the chip with EDA tools basically transfer RTL code into the physical layout. And then you send it for tape out to one of the fabs like TSMC, Intel or Samsung. Voila! There is no doubt that RISC-V will become a major competitor to ARM and one day may even dominate the market. Let me know in the comments what do you think. If you want to support me creating these videos, the link to the Patreon is below. Now check out the video about the next big wave in chip design. I will link it here and also in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.